Hey, before we get started, I wanna tell you about something. This is a game called Vikings War of Clans. Yeah, Odin is telling you about a game about Vikings. Now this game is awesome. If you just give it five minutes, you can see why I'm so addicted to it. Vikings War of Clans resembles the top PC strategy games of the 90s and the thousands, which we are all crazy about. But now it's finally on mobile and you could easily play it during a five minute break at work. Tremendous battles between Western and Eastern coalitions leave nobody indifferent. A new massive battle is coming this month, and we need you. Come join me in my game. My nick is Odin Makes, of course. Odin is telling you to be part of Vikings War of Clans. Support my channel, download Vikings from the link below, and get my special bonus of 200 gold for a fast and successful start. Hello, I'm Odin, and I have a Patreon page where I let you guys vote on what prop I'm gonna make once a month. September's winner is... The Good Samaritan from Hellboy. In a previous video, I made Hellboy's right hand of doom. <laughs> so this time, let's make his trusty sidearm. I lucked out and found the best reference material available. Prop Store of London had the actual Good Samaritan prop for sale a few years ago, and they took pictures. They included the original design plans and a photo with a gun next to a ruler. So I was able to scale up the plans and I started cutting out foam. I started with the cylinder and I used a hole saw so I could cut out two sets of three layer foam discs. I marked where the chamber should go and drilled them out with two different hole saws. One set would match the barrel and the other is just right for the bullets. Now I plan to have the cylinder spin, so I'll use a pin from a door hinge to hold it all in place and I wrap the cylinder in 3mm craft foam to hide all the ugly hole saw cuts and make it just a little larger. I use my Dremel to sand down the craft foam and to carve the cylinder flutes into the sides. The Good Samaritan has open chambers in the cylinder, so I used a razor knife to cut them out as well. Is there any historical evidence of any gun whose cylinder has exposed chambers like this? I mean, it seems like a really unsafe idea, you know, for a human? Next, I started on the barrel. I cut some 3 quarter inch Schedule 40 PVC to the right length and glued a strip of 8 inch styrene plastic down one side. Now the plastic is 8 millimeters tall because I want to wrap the barrel in 5 millimeter and 3 millimeter foam to bulk it up. And I wanted exposed plastic on the bottom so I'd be able to glue the barrel to all the parts that I'm going to make underneath it. The Samaritan's barrel is octagonal and not round, so I carefully sand the sides down with a belt sander measuring the faces so they are all really close to the same size. All the parts under the barrel are made from styrene plastic and PVC pipe. Now there is a T-shape just under the barrel and a large tube under that. There's some detail in the front of this bottom tube and I had some toilet paper rollers left over from my Men in Black Neuralizer build and I fit the small side into the PVC and glued it in place. Now I'm not sure if this is supposed to be the ejector rod but I like the look of this for the end. There is a knurled ring at the back of this tube. The lid from my water bottle fits the PVC pipe. And behind this is the box that the hinge is part of. So I cut up some styrene, made a box, and started a hinge from PVC. I was able to glue the barrel to this assembly because of the exposed strip of styrene, and I could glue the back of the barrel to the long plate that I left off of the hinge box. There's a connection that runs from the ejector rod to the barrel, and I cut some craft foam and glued it in place. I used my Dremel to grind out and sand a hole for the barrel. Then, I covered the end of the door hinge pin with marker. I lined a chamber up with the barrel and pressed the pin into the back plate. It left a mark where I needed the drill so I can glue the door pin in place to hold on the cylinder. The, the pin is actually longer than I dare to drill out, so I cut it off a little shorter and I'll be able to glue all this together once everything is painted. I needed to start on the grip and the back half of the gun, so I cut out my paper pattern and I make three copies in styrene. One has the profile of the grip, so it will be in the middle, and the other two are going to be the sides of the frame and will be the pivot for the breaking hinge. I drill out the holes where I'm gonna add decorative screws, but first I screw them all together and sand all the sides to be the same. So what I wanna do is actually make the breaking action of the gun, the part where you can actually crack it open and put bullets in it. Now, to make the hinge, my plan was to use PVC pipe with a wooden dowel inserted into it. 
Now, there's a bit of play between the wooden dowel and the pipe because it's not a perfect fit. I'm just gonna wrap some black masking tape around it to make the diameter correct. The other thing I wanna do, I wanna find the center of the wooden dowel and drill a hole straight into it. That'll be the pivot point, and once I know where that is, I can screw the dowel in place, and then I can sand all this down to fit the PVC pipe, and my hinges will fit together. It's a little complicated, but I'm pretty sure this is gonna work out for me. To assemble the back, I cut a bunch of strips to 14 millimeter. Some of the parts need to be heated and bent to accommodate the curves. Now, all three of these profiles were cut the same, so now I remove the pivot point and the brake latch top from the middle section, and I'll cut out a one centimeter square so I can glue in a tab for the trigger. Plus, I need to add a couple circles of plastic to strengthen the hinges. I assemble all the parts together, and I hold them in place so I can glue them. And now I know that all the moving parts will line up and work, but it still needs some sanding after gluing. I add a single sheet of plastic to hide the five layers that make up the middle, and it'll add some strength to this part of the gun, because this little part of the gun has to support all of the barrel and everything else, since the only real connection is that pivot hinge. And I'll drill out all the holes that I covered and fit the wooden dowel in place to test my new hinge. I cut some strips of 16th inch thick styrene to cover the bottom of the frame, and I'll use it on the back as well later. This stuff is thin enough that I can bend it to shape by hand, and I drill out the slot for the trigger and glue it in place. I want to use some countersunk screws for the pivot, so I drill out the holes just a little bigger and then use a countersink bit so the screw will be flush to the plastic. I can't just screw in the screws because the wooden dowel is starting to just spin inside the PVC pipe. So on the underside, I add a set screw to keep the wooden dowel from spinning. Now, a little later, the weld on four glue that I was using on the PVC pipe actually broke free. So I re-glued the pipe in place with PVC cement, and I made sure the screw went inside the box to hide it. I traced the cylinder in the back of the frame onto some styrene so I could make the recoil shield. Once again, I used the marker on the door pin and then made a mark onto the recoil shield. What I really wanna do is drill a hole and set a magnet in here because the magnet will hold onto the hinge pin and keep the whole gun shut. I traced the pattern for the grips onto the three layers of glued foam and then cut them out with a scroll saw. Now, this saw has a spiral blade, which lets me cut foam in any direction. I then fit the foam grips to the frame and start to trace the basic shape of the grips to the sides of the foam. After carefully sanding the grips on the belt sander, I fine tune the shapes with a Dremel using a variety of bits. I tried to get the grips to fit in my hand, but this is a massive gun. I cut out a trigger from thick styrene and then layer some thinner styrene to each side and then I grind down the front edge of the Dremel. I heat up a strip of thick styrene to the shape of the trigger guard and then sand down the ends so that they're thinner and round it off. I glue with the trigger in place and then I can glue on the trigger guard. And I also add a couple of screws for decoration. I heat up those extra long nubs that I had left in the back and bend them around for the curve that's at the back of the frame. Then I cover up the back with more thin styrene and add a little piece to the top. Then I use the Dremel to sand it all down to size. For the top rail on the gun, I cut it to fit the barrel and made it a little wider to go over the cylinder. Then I added some pieces to the underside. I glued on the front sight. Then I added a strip as a hook onto the back of the top rail and added some more pieces to the back so it'll look like they're part of the brake release. Now I wanted to see a rod as part of the brake release when the gun was open. So I just cut a piece of 10 gauge ground wire and glued it in place. To make the brake release lever, I heated the plastic and mashed the knurls from another tool into it. That gave me the texture that I wanted. Then I could cut out the lever shape that I liked, bent it to fit the side of the cylinder, glued it in place, and added another small piece under it for support. To make the hammer, I cut out and glued two pieces of five millimeter foam and added more to each side for a better hammer spur. And then I sanded it to shape, and then I added another small piece of plastic to be the back of the firing pin. The symbol for the BPRD is carved into the grips, so I used a carving bit in the Dremel and carved one out for each side. I then used a heat gun to open the carving a little and seal the foam. Now this also shrank all the thin edges of the foam, but that's okay. The last thing I need to make is bullets. I like the clear top bullets, so I found some Halloween makeup at the dollar store that has bullet-shaped clear caps. 
They almost fit inside of a half inch Schedule 40 PVC pipe, but not quite. So I place the pipe into my drill press and use a step bit to drill out the pipe to have a three quarter inch inside diameter. I then cut the pipes to the right length and cut out small discs of plastic so I could cap the ends. Now to make the base of each bullet, I plan to use a washer and the head of a fabric rivet. I drilled a hole for the end of the rivet to fit into and then super glued it and the washer to each base. I spray painted the shells gold and all the clear caps I sprayed with a frost coat. They're still a little loose in the pipe, but a short strip of tape holds them in place just fine. I really like the tracker bullet from the first movie, so I took the LED and batteries from an electronic glow stick, wrapped some foam around it, and I can activate the LED with a thumbtack to complete the circuit. Put it all together and you have a green glowing tracker bullet. I painted all the plastic parts with flat black spray paint and I used plastic dip on the grips and the cylinder. Now I didn't want to tape the barrel again to spray the plastic dip, so I just painted the foam on that with a couple of coats of black craft tape. Now I can assemble the gun. I carefully glue the grips in place and sand the plastic to be the same shape as the grips. I had cut out a butt plate in plastic and I glue that in place and then I can screw the main halves together at the pivot. I just add some hot glue into the hole to hold the cylinder pin in place. Then I can glue on my top rail, making sure it fits the barrel and the brake latch easily. Then I scratch up the paint to the back frame so I can glue on the hammer. The painting is simple. I just use acrylic craft paints and make the grip brown to be wood and the rest of the gun is a dry brush with a dark silver overall and then I use a really light silver just on the edges. Now I'll do a black wash on the grips and then brush some brown on again because that'll help break up the cartoony look of just one coat of paint. I add some decorative screws to the frame and drill out the grip so I can put in a tiny eye bolt and tie on the leather tassel strap. Everything I used to make this was picked up locally, and I put a part list in the description. These here tracking bullets, they're my favorite. <laughs> now, there's lots of different ways that you could go about making the Good Samaritan from Hellboy, but this is how Odin makes. I now have a Patreon page, which will give you the chance to win props that are made right here in Odin Makes. And it's the only place where I'll talk about my upcoming builds. If you like the video or have ideas or something for me to make, please leave them in the comments below. And if you make any of these projects, you can send me a picture. You know, I'm pretty sure if I shot this thing, I'd just break my arm. <laughs>